Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia the Redhead, and I am here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, Beatrice. What's up? How's everybody doing? Oh, great. It's thundering again tonight. Yep. We've got some storms in North Texas. Yeah. And so you might hear a little rattling, a little thundering, a little lightning. And if so, don't worry. We're safe. Yeah, we're fine. We're here to talk about the valley yeah series premiere yeah series premiere of the valley season one episode one baby oh my god we're right at the beginning we are we're we're here we're queer yeah well she's queer get over it yeah and we're ready to go but before we do we do have to remind you please hide your wife and hide your kids we are a politically incorrect podcast we say controversial things we use bad words a lot so you are forewarned but if you are you might want to find yourself another dumpster, honey. But if you're down and you like to party with the other raccoons, welcome to this one. And if you are down and like to party, be sure to follow us on Instagram at Reality TV Cringe and join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash Reality TV Cringe. We have so much so bonus much. content up on so there. Much. It's ridiculous. So much. And if you are watching on YouTube, first and foremost, hello, how are you doing? You look lovely today. Please do not forget to like and comment and share and subscribe because truly everything you do helps us. Although we are growing so slowly on I YouTube. I know. It's so kind slow. of why. It's kind of reminiscent of our Instagram days, how it took yeah. us forever to get to 5,000. Yeah. I mean, we had to wait a long time yeah. to be recognized by the public on I Instagram. No, What is up with that? YouTube as well. I think we've been at t- between 2010 and 2060, so 2060, I don't know, for eight years. Stop. <laughs> it's been a really long time. I'm like, I don't get it. I feel like our content is really good. I mean, it's top tier content. I feel like our commentary is really insightful yeah. and funny. So I don't really know what's happening on YouTube, but I don't care if you're here from YouTube. Thank you thank for being you. here with us. We appreciate it. You're one of the OGs. Yes. All right. Let's get into The Valley season one, episode one entitled Welcome to the Valley. But before we do, there are a couple of pieces of gossip already. Yeah. Coming out about some of the cast members. First and foremost, we have the star and the other star, Jax and Brittany. Mm-hmm. Of course, Jax is from Vanderpump Rules. He's an OG. Now he's branched off into this new show uh, in which we're going to learn more about him and his marriage to Brittany, their son Cruz, their home, their life, only to discover before we even begin that they're already separated. Oh, they're already confirmed? Yeah, she's <sighs> living in a different domicile. Well, I mean, I could have called it from the ending preview of this first yeah. episode when she talks about their sex life and shit. We'll get to it. Yeah. I'm like, oh, snap. Yes. They seem like an odd pair to me anyway. Well, Jax just seems like a terrible person. Yeah. So anybody married to Jax is going to be struggling and having a hard time right. and is at some point going to throw in the towel because he's a terrible, terrible, terrible person. Yeah. He really is awful. And he's a hypocrite. Oh, yeah. And the whole time watching it, I'm like, you're just a butcher version of Tom Sandoval. Yes. Like, that's literally it. Yes. <laughs> They're both pieces of shit. And at the end of Vanderpump, we have a confrontation between Sandoval and Jax. And Jax is calling Sandoval out. And I'm like, how dare you? It's not that your points aren't germane right. and salient. It's that, who are you? <laughs> exactly. After all the years we saw you, Jax, on Vanderpump Rules, who are you to call out anybody for their bad behavior, much less infidelity? Yes. When last episode of Vanderpump Rules, Katie Maloney is like, yeah, there's still rumors to this yeah. day of Jax still cheating on Britney. Like, no wonder they're separated. I was watching the after show, I think last week, it was the VPR after show, but they had all the people from the Valley on and I'm like, who are these fools? I don't care. But almost everybody in the cast of the Valley said that they had heard those rumors about Jax and it's just not true. Mm, Like he would never not ever cheat on Britney. And I'm like, again. (laughs) <laughs> come on he did in 2017 Jax would definitely cheat on Britney so anyway yeah. they're separated presumably we're gonna see the journey of that mm. over the course of this season I like that and I am into it yeah but shockingly there's another couple that is <gasps> also separating gasp Jesse and Michelle oh I called that one too oh my god he looks like a turd dude. I mean he uh, for sure and she looks 
fed up with yeah, him. Yeah, she's over him. Oh, like there's five seconds introducing them as new people. I'm like, who the fuck are you? Who do? Why do I care? Right. I'm like, oh, you hate each other. Y'all are getting divorced. Yeah. And he just seems like a Peter Pan man child, <laughs> hasn't grown up, doesn't want to contribute anything to the relationship in terms of their child. Yeah. Doesn't want to not drink champagne at 9.59 in the morning. <sighs> so he's just a big baby. Yeah. She's taking care of everything. And now she's separated from him. So there you go. You fuck around. You're gonna find out. You're gonna find out. Well, two separations this yes. season. I'm into it. Yes, and obviously they are telegraphing some of that drama as well yeah. in this episode. So that's what we know about the cast. But why don't we kind of get into it? Now, they were kind of bopping around. A lot. To a lot of people's houses, giving us a glimpse of kind of what they're doing and how they're living. So I, I'm just going to condense it to commentary about them like generally is Good. that okay yes All right. starting with jesse and michelle uh-huh. who we just spoke about um jesse modeled with Jax way back in the day when they were youngsters i think okay. in new york okay he and his now wife michelle who by the way is beautiful oh gorgeous way more beautiful than jesse is handsome yep 100 um they're both realtors ah rich sidebar what? Sidebar, everybody. Have you heard the news that apparently is sending shockwaves through the realtor world? What? Apparently there was a lawsuit against the Realtors Association for their commission structuring. What? Like when you sell a house, if I'm going to sell this house, I have to pay 6% mm-hmm. of what I get for the house in commissions to my realtor who then splits it with the buyer's realtor. Mm-hmm. And then there's a lot of fees and there's a lot of other things that go on with the buying and the selling of homes as well. Due to this lawsuit, it's going to change everything. They can't just automatically charge a 6% commission. In fact, it's probably going to change. Like if you're selling homes, it's, prob- it's probably going to change to something like 1% to 1.5%. <gasps> Whoa. Yeah. Versus, I think, paying maybe a flat fee or maybe 1% to the person who's buying, which is a bummer. You might have to put that up front. And the reason I mention this is because this is a historic shift and change for anybody who owns property. This is good for us overall. But when you look at people like Jesse yeah. and Michelle, right. who are realtors and living in that house next to the Chateau Marmont because of appearances and such, it's really going to hit their bottom line oh for sure and i mean i never watched like that show on netflix selling sunset i watched a couple episodes but like it seemed to me when i kind of skimmed it they're you know fancy realtors so they're selling multi-million dollar properties but it's not like they sell those every day it's like sometimes it takes months to sell shit or years to sell these mcmansions so it's like you're working for mm-hmm. that three or six percent commission but now if it's one to two percent i mean that's right. like that's a huge cut. That's crazy. But when you take it out of luxury real estate and you bring it into the realm of normie real estate, maybe you're selling a house for $500,000, then the commission is obviously much less. Right. And now it's going to be even less than that. So you have, I think, a million and a half realtors who just handle like one hundred and fifty to $300,000 properties to $500,000 properties. And all of those people are going to have a really hard time. Yikes. Yeah. So a lot of these luxury real estate shows, I'm just wondering how it's going to affect them. And oh, I can't wait to see. my God. Craziness. So Jesse and Michelle, these two are realtors. Uh-huh. They have one daughter who might be the most beautiful girl I've ever seen. At three years old, her yes. name is Isabella. So beautiful. So cute. You know what it made me think? Huh. That I need to give you a grandkid. Yes. Yeah. Or five. <laughs> Like, where's my granddaughter? Girl, like I where's said. Where's my baby? If I could grow sperm, yeah. I would have had five by now. Uh, we need to make some alternate arrangements. Yeah. I'm sorry. She was just so gorgeous. Yeah. But Jesse doesn't help with anything. No, not at all. He doesn't wake up with Isabella. Michelle has to do everything. In fact, we see Michelle in their home um, doing the laundry and he's bitching about it and critiquing it. And she's like, do you want to do it? And he's like, absolutely not. No. So he's one of those guys. I literally could not deal with that. That is like my single pet peeve. Like if I feel like I'm doing fucking everything, I get pissy. I get mad. Like I don't know how Michelle even tolerates something like that. If my spouse said, no, I'd rather have you do it. I'd be like, oh, we gonna catch it. (laughs) I'm going to be throwing 
beef like i'd be so pissed and i want to complain about what you're doing the entire time i want to oversee and project manage you while i'm not contributing to it yeah so he seems like a piece of shit it's going to be great to watch him yeah then kind of on the opposite end of that spectrum we have danny and nia now nia just had twins Uh, they also have a toddler that's two years old named asher and nia was a former miss usa which is awesome but i really liked danny me too according to nia like he wakes up every single night he takes care of all of the kids he's a really hands-on father he takes care of her he's a former child actor yeah who was in iCarly yeah did you watch that i did but i was trying to remember who the fuck he was i'm like you're not really memorable dude but it's okay i mean he seemed very nice about it and he's like well now you may recognize me from voiceovering on uh the walking dead and i'm like as a zombie zombie <laughs> like, is anybody gonna I recognize you i think he was you? being funny yeah he's very sweet though he is very sweet and i didn't know how to take him when i was watching the after show last week for vpr because i'm like who is this guy yeah and why are you going to be on my television right. but now i'm thinking he's a stand-up guy and nia seems lovely his wife. yes and so we'll see what happens with that the other couple we're introduced to is janet and jason the lawyer that's right now janet used used to hang maybe still does hang with, I want to say, Sheena and oh. was it Stassi, Katie, Kristen, Ariana? Like she knows the girls. Okay. I think she used to be a seamstress. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think she used to sew stuff for them and also be their friend. Um, she has gone on to marry Jason, who is an attorney, who is passive. Yeah. While she says she's aggressive. Mm-hmm. And Jason is fine. Yeah. I think he's very handsome. He's very handsome. Very sweet. Yeah. Probably the best man on this cast total and you know he makes that money corporate yeah. defense lawyer bitch for workers cop and stuff i, I mean don't he's making really money. do they uh yeah if he's doing it for like a corporate firm oh girl oh god i don't yeah. think so oh yeah i'm I mean, sure I, um, okay was it depends on who the corporate it just does depend like, he made money just, too he did make money but like i'm we're not talking about lots and lots of money but it doesn't matter i'm sure jason makes a lot of money he's also handsome yeah he's very supportive we see him walking around with a couple of cantaloupes <laughs> Wrapped around his no, chest watermelon. and a big old watermelon because yeah. Janet wants to give him the the feeling of being pregnant. And he's I a do good love sport. that. Yeah, he is. He's like, dang, this is hard. Mm-hmm. I love seeing men do that kind of shit or like do those cramp simulators. Yeah. I how you love like me it. now? Seriously, because yeah. all of them are like they wake up immediately, especially with the cramp simulators and birth simulators. They're doing it at like level one, like not even the full amount. And they're like, yeah. I can't take it. Like, are you kidding? Me? I'm like, you big babies. You don't even know. Uh, no, not at all. I had to get the uterine lining. Well, the lining of my uterus <laughs> burned off and cauterized because my cramps were so bad. And I Bitch. was just like, peace out. I'm never going to have children again. And yep. I do not want to feel this ever again ever i do not miss it one bit like you poor young lady i'm jealous ovulating all the time and having your cramps uh, I feel so much bad. i know me too i'm fertile myrtle i'm having it every month oh my god i that hate egg it. is dropping just waiting <laughs> just wait just, just rotten just waiting for some sperm we gotta get you some sperm i girl. know am i being inappropriate no i don't mean to pressure you <laughs> but i do um, and we have another duo, not a couple, that is Zach, who is Brittany's gay best friend from Kentucky, although now I think he's the best friend to Kristen. And then Jasmine, who I recognize from something, and I'm not sure where I've seen her. I think it's like in a movie or on television. I know she worked for Sir, but I don't think it's from VPR, but she looks really familiar. But anyway, they're, I think, like on the periphery of the group. Oh, okay. But we're going to see them over the season. Hmm. And finally, we have... Kristen and Luke. Yeah, Hot Mess Express and yeah. Guy from Colorado. Yeah. <laughs> Luke Colorado, <laughs> yeah. as Jax called him. And we'll get into that because yeah. we're going to start pretty early with that. But we start this entire episode at Jax and Brittany's house. We see what it's like to live a day in the life of the Taylors. We've got Jax at the Kitchen Island talking about all the things he's got to do. We've got so many cameos because everybody wants a cameo from me <laughs> and also of course i got the bar it's opening up we're busy we've got a podcast okay. i mean i'm so successful and then of course Brittany, there's the shit that you do yeah he's a piece of work dude uh-huh. and Brittany is like so in denial of how much of a piece of shit he is i mean maybe this season we'll see her like come to and realize like through talking to people talking about their marriage problems and all that that she's like oh maybe i'm married to a piece of shit but i'm like 
girl. And she's like insecure as fuck. Yeah. I mean, she's taking it out on her plastic surgery. They talk about their best friend who's a plastic surger- surgeon and they're so, so great. lucky. Like, like okay. I don't think you're lucky. I think you're in a place where everybody's getting really bad plastic surgery. Yeah. I think everybody there has a mind virus. Yeah. I feel like you can't see clearly like we can see you in pretty. You're a beautiful girl. What are you doing? She comes downstairs. She's got this big bandage around her head because apparently she got some liposuction on a gobbler like yeah. her double chin which is fair i've had liposuction there too i mean i'm not going to hate that's fine i guess I, mean, I, I just i'm i'm wondering what her motivation is to make these changes because she's so beautiful and we know if you watched vpr we know that it was jacks that convinced her to get her boobs done really and when you look at her boobs they're on her frame they're overflowing way too big they're overflowing they're it looks uncomfortable yes i just feel bad for her i'm just like you need to stop like you're like one track away like you're on the track to darcy and stacy land like stop yeah now yeah please yeah and leave jacks because obviously he makes her so insecure yes like she wants to like look beautiful for him and it's like t- fucking with her mind right i wonder i that's wonder what if that's thinking. what's going on i mean i don't I really, I think she's a lovely person and I don't want to shame her in any way. No, no. I am just very concerned because she's been getting a lot of Botox. Those eyebrows are going higher and higher up on her head. Um, and I was noticing something really funky with her mouth. I know it's like frowning. Yeah, like her lower lip was not moving and like yeah. her whole mouth was moving in the direction of the lower lip, uh, lower mouth. But um, I guess she addressed this actually. Really? On the podcast that she has with Jax. And she said that that was a direct result of the surgery that she had oh. because she still had some nerve damage oh and she's God. like for about four episodes you're going to continue to see this happening with my mouth and then it starts to get better okay so yeah it's not like something permanent that she has done to her mouth it good. is a result of the surgery okay that's good but i just want her to stop yeah please stop while you're ahead and are you doing it because you're trying to get your husband to be attracted to you again that's what i think why that's what i think because he's probably not fucking her because he's Jax. he's again sandoval 2.0 he's just gonna be looking for it from elsewhere it's just sad he already is yeah then we go over to Kristen and luke's apartment Mm -hmm. and they are getting ready to move out of this little apartment into a bigger apartment so that they'll have more room and hopefully at some point they're going to have a baby and we'll talk about that but i was just gooped and gagged and flummoxed when I learned that Kristen had sold her beautiful little house. Because I remember when she bought it. Oh. She purchased this beautiful little house. She had like some t-shirt printing company. She had a side gig. She was on VPR. And then she met somebody named Alex. And then he convinced her to sell her house and move in with him. And then dumped her seven months later. And she has no house and doesn't have an apartment. That's Wild. what she was talking about when she's talking Wild. about the breakup. That sucks. Yes. That's horrible. I was just like hearing her talk about the breakup and then seeing all the flashbacks of VBR of all the other guys that she's dated. I'm like, girl, yeah, you need to chill out. You need to stop. She's like on the precipice of a midlife crisis, I think. Oh, uh, uh, precipice. <laughs> I think she's, she's already in it. Deep into a midlife yeah. crisis. I think she's in the fear stage where she's like, I need to have a kid right now. Yep. If I'm ever going to have a kid, I need to find somebody, a partner. I need to like get my life to the next level. So she has all of this pressure that she's dealing with. But this is not the way. No. I mean, Luke seems like a perfectly affable and nice guy, but he's another NPC, yep. nondescript. Who are you really? And Kristen, why are you so sprung for this guy? Are you really, or are you just looking for a sperm donor? I think she's looking for a sperm donor. I mean, he doesn't even fucking live in the state. He spends 99% of his time in Colorado. So it's like, why do you want to be with this guy and have a kid with him if he's not going to be around all the time? And he's another guy who's an entrepreneur, yeah. which is what? Uh, what does that mean you actually do a jobless loser he's got 70 acres and yeah. i don't know where in colorado he's got those acres i'd really love to know because <laughs> Grand maybe, Junction. He's, maybe <laughs> he's got some money in his property but like i don't know who you are i don't know why Kristen loves you i guess we're just going to trust that Kristen does but the points that were being made through this episode about how Kristen has kind of just dick hopped from one guy to the next guy to the next guy i feel like are valid yeah it seems like it and I feel like she's way too intense for this guy. Oh, yeah. One thousand percent. Like, he doesn't know what he got into. No. Fucking her behind the bathroom at, a, at some wedding. 
<laughs> I'm like two weeks after she breaks up with yeah. this guy, Alex, she fucks this guy and then yeah. is in a relationship with him. I'm like, that is toxic. But I feel like when I was her age at 39, 38, she's 40, 40. I know she's 40 now. But at the time that that fucked up ex told her to sell her house, I feel like at that age, I would have been like, absolutely not. I'll rent it. Right. I'll keep it as an income property. I'll make sure it's generating something for me, but I'm not going to sell my shit and move into your dumb, dumpy apartment only for you to dump me seven months later. Yeah. Like, come on, Kristen, you're smarter than that. Or are you? Well, I mean, is she, a, is she a drinker? Like, does she do, do a lot of drugs? I like, don't is think she... so, right? Everybody, I don't think so. I mean, I know she's had cocktails. She's just crazy. But yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, the next scene, we've got Kristen going to sit down for lunch with Zach and Jasmine. Yeah. What did you think of that scene? I mean, I was like, who are these people? Why like, are you here? I do not care. What are we doing? She talks about Zach and how she stole him from, uh, what's her face, Brittany. And I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. is that going to be a point of contention later on? Like, why is he brought up? And Zach's like talking about how he's been there since the moment Kristen started dating Luke and he was not for it. Of course. But now he's like, oh, I think they're good together and she's happy. And I'm like, Okay, what kind of best friend are you? Did he really say that? I think he said something more along the lines of, but Luke is way better than all of her other exes. Yeah, not he supports Not necessarily her. that Kristen should be with him, but like, if you're going to do it, crazy lady, which you obviously are going to do it, might as well be Luke because he seems like a decent guy. <sighs> I mean, I guess. So. I feel like, and let me take your temperature on this. Okay. I feel like the central storyline and plot point for the whole season is going to be Kristen yeah. and this baby and her relationship. That's because what it that's seems what like. this lunch becomes. That's what every other scene becomes in this episode. And I'm like, is that enough to carry this show? No. I mean, I'd rather see the demise of these two uh, right. marriages that are in the, in the show rather than talk about Kristen and her fucked up life. Because she's freaking out about her biological clock. Because she, Mm -hmm. I mean, has been fucking a bunch of losers. Yeah. I feel bad for Kristen. She's sitting on the couch in her interstitial in a dress that really doesn't look good on her. No. And I feel bad for her because she's like, I'm the oldest chick in the group, man. Yeah. And I don't have a husband. I don't have a baby. Like, when is it going to be my turn to have all of these good things? Well, I mean, when you work on yourself and you realize that you're picking a bunch of losers to sleep with rather than picking quality people that will actually want to settle down with you and have kids. It's not that fucking hard. I'm very curious. Like, what is her money situation yeah like. because when she was on vpr she was making a very pretty coin and if i may remind you she was fired from vpr with stassi schroeder because they did some racist bullshit oh and i think at the time that she was let go from vpr she had her t-shirt business but we hear nothing about that anymore we also know that she had her home but like she sold that so like what's her financial situation like it's probably bad that's why she's on the valley it's probably why she's on the valley <laughs> Ooh, yikes. yikes it's gonna be good it's yeah gonna be interesting i think all right after this Brittany and michelle go to visit nia in kind of an innocuous scene where they're just talking about Babies. having baby fever yeah and the twins are so cute nia again is going on about danny her husband the actor from iCarly. <laughs> Um, being a great dad and taking care of business and taking yeah. care of her. And I couldn't help but notice that they live in an apartment. Uh-huh. They don't live in like a single family home, <laughs> it seems like. But he's doing whatever he can to take care of his wife. And I just say that to say, I would much rather have a Danny who's helping me with my kids or helping me. Like we're doing it together. We're partners. Yeah. And we're living in a condo and that's okay. Then a fucking Jesse who's so concerned about how coiffed his hair is that he's not willing to do laundry or change a diaper. 1000%. I think Danny is the number one guy in this group. Personally, that's what I think. That's my vibe on him too. And he seems like he actually cares about Nia and like values her. Mm -hmm. Like even when she was talking about like, I'm cleared for sexy time. Like after just having their babies, he's like, well, it's not sexy time. I make love. Yeah. I only make love to my wife. Which like, is so sweet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, we also see a conversation between the ladies where Brittany is talking about Jax's treatment of Luke. Like he doesn't like Luke. 
when they went to Mexico for Sheena's wedding, as we saw on VPR, he didn't even talk to Luke. He pretended like Luke wasn't even there. And I'm just like, what an asshole. I mean, why? Like, who? what authority do you have to like judge all these people and to think like you, your opinion of these people has any merit? Like, yeah. at all. Like, does he even like Kristen? It doesn't seem like he likes Kristen. Well, we're like brother and sister. Well, you okay. fucked. So <laughs> Ew. You're not brother and sister. Ew. And I think Janet even said something like, yeah, that's kind of weird with your past with Kristen. But yeah. he does it all under the guise of caring about Kristen and the choices that she's making. But I really feel like, especially in this episode, he's trying to platform a storyline. He's bringing it up in every single encounter and scenario so no i don't think he really even cares about Kristen. he doesn't no. care about anybody but himself 1000 percent. and to me like every time he brings up somebody else's problems or somebody else's life i'm like you are just trying to take the heat off of yourself mm -hmm. because you're a cheater and you don't want to fuck britney no more even though she's the mother of your child and wonderful to you and way what like so wonderful. does everything for you I don't know what she sees in him at all. Serves up your whole life on a silver platter. Yeah. And facilitates your very existence. Like, but <sighs> she's not hot like you want her to be after she gave birth to your child. Doesn't make any from sense. From her body and loins. This is what we're doing. Jax, you have always been shit. Yep. And you will continue to be shit. And as we see in the episode later, we've got Kristen after the confrontation confrontation in Jax's kitchen. She's doing her interstitial, her talking head. And she's like, so I'm supposed to take advice, life advice from Jax Taylor? <laughs> I this mean. This lahooser? <laughs> he's always been a lahooser? Yeah. Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah, and he's trying to do the same thing Tom Sandoval's doing in VPR where he's yep. like acting like he's this reformed bad boy. And he's like done a lot of healing okay. and done a lot of inner okay. work. And he's mm. matured. And it's like, no, dude, just because you have a house and a wife and a kid doesn't mean you've got any of your shit together. Like, true. Seriously. He's and, acting like he does. And he doesn't. And the rumors were, and I'll just share them with you. The rumors okay. were throughout VPR that he was a complete coke fiend. Oh. And I'm sorry, but I feel like he is allegedly still a coke fiend. It seems like He's it. still giving cocaina vibes. Yeah. The way he talks. His eyes. How he fucking sweats. Like the manic energy that he's given. And that would make coke vibes. That would make sense why he had four nose jobs too. I'm just saying. <laughs> like, oh my God. I, I mean, didn't even think about that. Yeah. He's probably got no fucking bridge. No nothing. Yeah. I don't know. But he's just, he's terrible. Yeah. And I see what he's doing. And I see what he's trying to set up. And it's just going to be chef's kiss <laughs> when it stops being about Kristen and her relationship and becomes all about Jax and what a shitty husband he is and how his marriage is going to fall apart. Now, meanwhile, across town, we have all the dudes... <laughs> going to some city golf place virtual golf they've invited luke they've set him up they yeah. set luke up to be grilled to be questioned and it's really uncomfortable jesse tells us at this time that Jax just doesn't like luke when luke walks Nobody in cares. he asks Jax, like am i still blocked <laughs> And Jax is like, um, what? I'm, did I block you? I didn't even know if I blocked you. You know you blocked him, Jack. Yeah, you know. He's like, well, why don't you go check and see if you're still blocked? And then I'll do my best to try and reverse that. I'm like, oh, shut up. Like, let's all kiss the ring of Jax Taylor. Seriously. No, motherfucking thank you. Um, th They get into a conversation with Luke. Like, what are your plans? Are you planning to leave Colorado where you spend 99% of your time to come here hang out with Kristen. And he's like, yeah, we're going to spend the summer together so I can be on the show mm -hmm. and I can fake date Kristen. <laughs> yeah. And pretend to want to impregnate her. Yeah, I absolutely am going to do that. Yeah. Make some money because I don't have a job. Because he's broke. In Colorado. He's kind of weird. I don't think he's like got bad vibes or anything. He's just kind of like an outcast to this whole group of oh, yeah. ritzy, pretentious, yeah. snobby people. He's not the same as these people. No, not at all. And then at some point, he's just like, well, have you thought this through though, bro? <laughs> like, it's not just like having a kid. You have to have health insurance. What about a car seat? Like, what about your life? Your life is going to totally change. And looks like, Jesus Christ. Well, first of all, I love Kristen. This is what we want to do. We just want to bring a child into the world and give that child a great life. And then jesse with his fucking hair is just like yeah well you know expectations it's not reality <laughs> like once a child comes into the 
this is him talking about himself. Yes. He's totally telling on himself. Once a child comes into the equation, it changes everything and is never the same again. Michelle <laughs> is lost to me. My own wife, who I loved and who had the perfect body, once she gave birth to Isabella, she's dead to me. These kinds of men, I hate like, you are literally going to be forever alone mm-hmm. because you can't get out of this 12 year old mentality that, oh my God, my wife has stretch marks. She's fucking ugly and wasted forever because she had her, her kid. Right. Like a real man uh, looks at a wife, hello, the mother of his child and is like, wow, you are literally amazing you are a divine Goddess. being like you gave birth a to a portal baby. of the divine life comes you. from your body let me kiss your stretch marks yes. thank you for doing all the work baby yes that is a real man and all these bitch babies jacks included mm-hmm. because i'm sure he probably doesn't want to fuck oh my God. Yeah. Brittany because her body has changed mm-hmm. oh god forbid uh, she looks a little bit different than what right. you dated before but even then i'm like if you cheated on her back in 2017 i mean you've never been really attracted no. to her no and let's talk about Britney's culpability here okay like Britney are you really shocked that the guy who Jax was is now the guy who Jax is right <laughs> like, like how much responsibility is on you for saying yes to this guy for wanting to be on VPR so badly that you move from Kentucky that you chase Jax in the first place now she coordinated in order to meet Jax because she wanted to meet with him and ultimately I believe get on this show Cringe. not this show but VPR and so you arranged all of this how much of that is on him and how much of that is on you I mean is that facts. fair to ask no that's totally fair that's why I said earlier like she's fucking delusional like she's thinking that he's a way better person than what he actually is. And I don't understand, like, is he really that manipulative that you are under this spell under him and that you just want to believe it's good because you have the house and you have the white picket fence and you have the appearance mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. everything is fine, even though he's not fucking you and he doesn't care about you and he treats you like ass. And talk shit about you to his friends. Yes. But weren't you WhatsApping me about how Jax like took a picture of Brittany from behind or whatever yes. where she looked yes. all fat and Yes. Yeah, she was pregnant with Cruz, so it would have been a while ago, obviously. She was really heavy with child. They were over some lookout somewhere and he was probably about ten to 20 feet behind her took a picture from her from behind and posted it and it was very very unflattering and at the time I remember being on the subreddits and people are just calling him a piece of shit because they know why he's doing it he's (sighs) doing it to shame her he's doing it because she's gonna see it and she's gonna feel bad and she was pregnant at the time that's that's who Jax is that is wild to me I literally when I want to post a picture of your daughter I'm always like do I have your approval to post yeah, this? Of course. Because Thank I you. always want her to be like in the best light and feel comfortable. Like I don't want to post something where she feels like she looks bad. Right. Of course. Like who fucking does that? Who posts an unflattering angle of your spouse? Of your spouse. I mean, that is fucked up, dude. He's the kind of guy who would do that to incentivize her to lose weight after she gives birth to the child. <sighs> yeah, yeah, you're totally right. All right. After this, we have Brittany and Jax going over to Janet and Jason's. It's very hot in the valley, apparently, because everybody keeps mentioning it. Jax is sweating orange in his armpits. <laughs> his spray tan. He's so gross. Cringe. Uh. I mean, I want to ask you. I know you're a little spin, yeah. but you have eyes and you yeah. can s- tell if somebody's attractive. Do you think Jax Taylor is attractive? Um, No, but like I have an eye for people who are assholes. Like I have known so many girls, like one of my best friends, like back in the day, super turbo straight her and I used to talk about men all the time and I'd be like why are you into these douchebags like she Mm -hmm. would always go after the guys who were like stereotypically hot but I knew they were pieces of shit like it's always those ones yeah it's always the guys who like peak in high school who think they're like so hot because they get all of the girls to make out with them behind the bleachers but then they're 40 year old losers like Mm -hmm. Jax who constantly cheat on everybody and then they end up forever alone and high on coke Yep. So he goes over to Janet and Jason's house and he does it solely to start talking shit about Kristen. And I love Jason here because to the camera, he's like, I like Kristen. Yeah. Like chill out. I think she's going to be a great mom. She's a kind person. She's a good person. She's always been really great to me. And I can't wait for her to be a mom. That's a good friend. Yeah. Meanwhile, Jax is just talking shit about this girl that's supposed to be as close to him as a sister. Right. Yeah. And I think the big thing here that we got out of this scene was Jax revealing that 
Kristen is being indiscriminate, I guess, about who she's willing to have a baby with because Kristen is trying to make it out to be the fact that she's with Luke and it's time to be behind her decision to have a child. Whereas Jax is like, that's not true. When she was with Alex, she wanted to get pregnant. Like one week before she broke up with Alex, she was talking about, I want to get pregnant with Alex. So it's not about the man. It's not about the family. It's about the child. And I'm like, so what? Who cares? She wants what a baby. What does it matter? There's nothing wrong with wanting a baby. And isn't that like a normal girl thing to do? Like when you're in a serious relationship with somebody, you always like think about wanting to have kids with them. I mean, of most course. of the time, you know, unless you're like Ariana with Sandoval, where you're like, I don't really want to have kids with you because you're a douchebag. But now she wants to have kids with her new boyfriend, Dan, or she's mm -hmm. thinking about it. Mm -hmm. So it's like most of the time, most girls are going to be thinking about that anytime they're with somebody. Sure, of course. But I mean, even if she's just going to be with, Luke in order to facilitate her getting pregnant and have a child. That's her right to do that. Why are you so hell bent on questioning her every move in regard to her reproduction? Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? He's taking the heat off of himself. I'm yeah. telling you, he's trying to make all these storylines about everybody else to distract from the, from the fact that his life is going to crumble. Um, then we get to the final scene where we have Brittany and Jax, but we're really Brittany. Yeah who is coordinating and throwing a birthday party for Janet. And it's a fair birth themed birthday party because yeah. Brittany's from Kentucky and Janet's from Ohio and they both love the county fair. So she's got like elephant ears and she's corn got dogs. games, corn dogs, and she's really done a great job. Jax does not deserve a woman like no, her. No, she's a all. good lady. Yeah. She would make somebody so happy who would actually value her yep. and actually be loyal to her. Yes. Poor girl. And she's doing it all by herself yeah. and she's asking Jax to help. And he's just like, I've got stuff to do. I haven't even eaten yet. She's yeah. like, blow up the corn dog, you bitch. Seriously. And so he ends up doing that. And um, we have people arriving. Lala and Sheena show up. And I was like, why is Sheena on my television? Well, the rumor like, is that both Lala and Sheena want to defect away from VPR and become <gasps> cast members of the Valley because they Stop. both live in the Valley. They too have children like Jax and all these other people. Oh. And so they're feeling like they're a better fit for the Valley, but they're waiting for season one to see how the ratings do, whether it's going to be brought back before oh, they make the jump on over. That is actually yeah. interesting because I was thinking this whole episode when you were talking about this last week, like how this is VPR adjacent. I'm like, it totally is. It's like the quote unquote grown up mature version of VPR, even though it's not really that. Like it's all a bunch of 40 year olds who have kids who are still pieces of shit. Right, right, right. <laughs> like, well, for the most part. I mean, some of these new couples seem like they actually have their shit together. Yes. But yeah, that would be actually interesting to see Lala and Sheena yes. on here. I think it would be interesting. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Um, so there were a few things I think of note that happened at the party. Uh, first and foremost, we have the big conversation in the kitchen about Kristen's reproductive rights. Uh, we yeah. have the tattoo situation where Kristen is trying to cut into line ahead of Jesse. <laughs> yeah. We have the pantsing of Danny. Yeah. So which do you want to tackle first because i have thoughts about it all um uh, let's do the krista conversation let's get over with about her reproductive rights okay so Jax, being the bitch boy that he is is talking to dudes in the kitchen about Kristen again yeah and her wanting to have a baby and he's so concerned about bringing a child into a situation that's not stable because Kristen's not stable then we have lala and sheena on the periphery and lala's like it's really fucking weird that we have a bunch of dudes talking about motherhood yeah for Kristen so she's like let me go get Kristen and she does yeah brings Kristen back and then they have the conversation which essentially is the same thing we've heard all along yeah with Jax saying oh I'm glad you're here Kristen wasn't talking shit or anything I meant to say this to your face but like while you're here let me just say I'm really fucking concerned that you're so excited to bring a child into this world and you're not prepared for what's going to actually happen long story short Kristen basically says, like, dude, just be my friend. Right. Why do you care? And Jax is like, well, I'm the kind of friend who's going to tell it to you. Tough love. <laughs> okay. I'm going to tell it to you till it hurts. So you know how I feel. And she's just like, that's not a friend. No. Like, I just want you to support me and be there for me. You say you're my brother. Like, act like my brother and support me. Yeah. But he doesn't know how to do that. He's never known how to do that. No. He seems like he's very brash and he just wants to tell people how it is. Even though his opinion doesn't mean shit. And I'm just like watching this scene thinking like, 
okay, Jax, you want to have a comment about her bringing in a child when she's saying she's in love with this guy and this guy wants to bring a child in the world with her while you have a child with a chick that you don't love you're gonna inevitably get divorced which is gonna fuck up that child also and now you're gonna be like a partial you know custody type of thing with your kid like shut the fuck up dude. right like you're trying to judge her for potentially getting into a scenario that you're already in and fucking up yeah talk to yourself Seriously. Fucking journal like Tom Sandoval does, and maybe you'll come into some insights. You, <laughs> for bitch. real, I can't stand it. And so Kristen actually starts crying. Yeah, I felt bad for her there. All of these people are standing around, and she feels bad, and she's just trying to have a baby. And earlier in the episode, Brittany's like, she's entitled to have a child. Let her do like, it. Let her do it. Like, why are we bugging about this? Right? Did he get fired from VPR too? Or did he just leave? No, he did. He was let go. He was not <laughs> fired at the same time as Stasi and Kristen, although he was involved oh. in the same incident. I believe he was involved, but it was really fucked up that they only fired the women and not Jax. And so like a year later, correct me if I'm wrong, it's all kind of fuzzy, everybody. But about a year later, they let him go. Oh, so he's a loser. Oh, so he's, he's washed oh, yeah. up. No, he's an asshole. Got it. Been an asshole. But Bravo doesn't care if you're an asshole if you bring in ratings. I mean, that's fair. Which I mean, is why they gave network. him a whole nother show. Yeah, of course. Why not? They're like, let's see you make a fool of yourself. Yeah. I mean, his life is imploding on this season, I'm sure. I hope so. I can't wait to see it. Um, We also see a very cringy scene where Jesse, again, the coiffed dude who's married <laughs> to Michelle, is standing in line to get a tattoo and Kristen wants to cut. And she's like, I've been standing here for so long. And he's like, no, I'm not going to let you cut. And then Kristen reaches over and like grabs his nipple. Yes, I forgot about this. And like titty whistles him. And he's like, don't do that. And then he reaches over and does it to her. And she's like, what the fuck? Like, I don't even know this rando. Right. What are you talking about, Kristen? Yeah. You don't get to put your hands on somebody's body on their nipples, which I'm sorry, there's sexual connotation that goes along with that, whether you're a man or a woman, and squeeze it and then act like you're so shocked and aghast when he does the same thing to you and call him out for it. Like, give me a fucking break. I mean, that's a very fair point. Like, don't do it in the first place. It's not different because you're a woman. Right, exactly. It's not appropriate in either case. Yeah. And she tells the camera something like, well, we all just put up with Jesse because we love Michelle. Okay. Oh my God, did you see the other thing with Jesse? He's standing there with Lala and he's standing there with his wife and he's trying to pick out the um font for his tattoo and he refers to lala as his mistress he's like i'll just let my mistress make the decision for me and he's like oh i'm sorry that's not cultured i mean my side piece i know and she's like okay not like i haven't been called that before right he's a weirdo and his wife is looking at him like he's absolutely trash for that yeah like read the room jesse what are you talking about and don't you know what's happening with lala and all the things that are being said about lala at this time and what she's really sensitive about and you're gonna call her a mistress which is kind of funny yeah i mean that was really fucking weird anyway finally we get to nia and danny again these are the ones that are normal people probably won't last long in the show please not they're getting ready to go because they've got nine thousand children they made an appearance and Jax approaches from behind high on coke as danny and nia are taking a picture and he pants danny and danny's not wearing any underwear y'all and so his ding like just hanging out hanging out I wish we could have saw it. I'd nubbin. like to see I'm, how I'm big. thinking it was a nubbin. You think it's I, a I don't nubbin. think anything was hanging personally. Oh my God. I think we're dealing with a button, a nubbin. He, maybe he's a grower, not a shower. God, don't be so maybe. fucking well, judgy. I mean, Nia, Miss USA, seems to like it. So. She does seem to like it. Who but am I? after he gets pantsed, Nia like gets really upset by it and she goes and cries. But I mean, granted, she well, says this. pants to your wife and uh, we saw her vagine. Oh, I mean, I'd be super pissed. You'd be fighting. I wouldn't be crying, but she's You'd be like fighting. She, I would be fighting. I'd be really mad. But she goes and cries and she says like in her talking head, she's like, I mean, I just had a kid like eight weeks ago or whatever. Like my emotions are all over the place. Yeah. And I'm over Jax because he's a piece of shit and I wanted to go and it was hot. Like there was a lot going right. on. Right. But she goes into the room and she cries about it with the girls and then Brittany comes over to ultimately apologize for Jax being a fucking piece of Which shit. Which I feel like she probably does a lot. Oh, 1000%. And she's like trying to make light of it, but it's not working. No. And so she's like, I'm sorry that he did that. And then Jax comes in eventually. He's like, yeah, I'm sorry. I pissed your husband. Okay, bye. <laughs> Let me go eat a corn dog. Like this guy, 
this he's terrible fucking guy we also need to talk about the conversation that Jax had with jesse in which jesse says like yeah it's been a really bad 24 hours for michelle and i oh yeah and we're not doing so great and Jax yeah. is like well you're not talking about separation are you and he's like jesse's like well she's actually, mentioned it yeah she's actually brought up divorce and Jax is like jeez big yikes yeah and i'm like well uh, it's inevitable dude jesse you suck you don't yeah. do anything and i was heartened to hear that it was michelle that's initiating a separation yeah. and not jesse because he's Called a piece of it. shit dump this fool then we move on to previews yes we have Kristen's infertility or fertility journey not infertility my god i'm sorry she's going and checking out her eggs and apparently she's got a lot of eggs for 40 years old we wow. love that for her yeah we see jack's opening his bar and schwartz is there saying well soon you'll be living with me <laughs> <laughs> and maybe so i mean he's predicting if it they're getting divorced yeah. jack's gonna probably end up in the same apartment building as probably. all the rest of them hoes we see Brittany talking to Jax about how she wants another child. Ugh. She's crying. Yeah. And he's just like, oh, stop crying. I know. And she's like, I can't even have emotions. And he's like, no, you cannot. No, you cannot. At all. With a straight face. I'm like, oh, my God. We have Brittany telling folks that they don't have sex. We have the rumors about Jax cheating, which kind of dovetail into this weird little scene with michelle and jack's talking to her about sending dirty pictures or sexy pictures was that what that was about like he's saying that michelle was sending dirty pictures i think the producers are trying to fake us out okay and maybe get us to believe that jacks and michelle have got something going on i think it's something different i think oh. by the time we get there it'll probably be a nothing burger and probably. or michelle has been sending nudes to somebody but it's not oh. jacks she would never send it to jack she's way too high class for jack sex we see janet and jason fight at the lodge we see jess jason chasing after janet as he should yeah and then we see um britney screaming at jacks at the lodge saying you're talking shit about me and trying to make me out to be a bad person oh my god i want to see that fight we end the preview at some hotel or something. We're in a hallway. Kristen is fighting with Michelle. Yeah. And Michelle is screaming about something. And then Kristen's like, your husband talks about divorcing you on camera all the time, bitch. Bitch. Yeah. And then she gets really frustrated. Kristen, Kristen is like, starts crying. She's like, I would rather deal with all of this shit on Vanderpump Rules. Like, I'd rather be, if I wanted to sign up for this shit, I'd rather be on VPR. I mean, of course, you were making a lot more money, Kristen, yeah. but this is where we are, and yep. we're all here together in the dumpster, yep. enjoying ourselves. So overall thoughts, now that we conclude, what did you think about the Valley? Do you think it has promise? Are you excited to continue? Yeah, I think there's some, you know, interesting dynamics that are going to be at play, like underneath all of the, you know, produced narratives and stuff yeah. that Jax is trying to force down our throats. So I think there's going to be some interesting stuff. I want to see some fighting. Yeah. I want to see some conflict. I want to see some breaking up. I think you're going to see it. I want it. Yeah. Give me all that trash. One thing I can tell you about Jax is he cannot keep it together. <laughs> I mean, I think he's going to try too. to pretend that he's this patriarch of the entire group. Like he's the number one guy, but nah. his life is currently falling apart. Yeah. And he's not going to be able to keep his shit together, which means he's going to explode a lot. There's going to be a lot of drama. Love and I it. live. I love it. And this I is, breathe. This is the kind of reality TV yeah. I love to see. Well, good. I'm glad we're here. Yeah. Together. Yeah. All right. On that note, is there anything else that we need to say to these beautiful raccoons? Beatrice. Well, if you love our podcast, you better oh, be going God. on to your favorite podcast Violet. platform and leaving us a glowing five star review. Five. Make sure it's nice. Talk about how pretty we are. Oh, my God. And how great pretty. we are. Yeah. <laughs> Please and thank you. Thank you very much. We will be back later actually very soon yeah. to talk about the latest episode of Vanderpump Rules. And until then, never forget that we have nothing but love for you and peace out. Bye, hoes. Bye, guys.